See, what you need to get about this story is the miracle did not happen in the master's hands. It happened in the disciples' hands. This is the last message in the series, The Blessed Life. But I'm gonna share with you how God can multiply your peace, your joy, um, your, your relationship with others, with him. He can restore, but he can also multiply your finances. So he's not just a God of addition. He's a God of multiplication. And let me just ask you this question. Would it be all right with you if God multiplied your finances. Let be okay? Okay, I'm just wondering, because some of you didn't say yes, so okay, it's all right, you know, if you don't want to multiply it. But I'm talking about so you could help people, so you can minister to people. And God doesn't mind if your kids get to go to a better school. He doesn't mind that. He doesn't mind if they need braces that you have the finances to give them braces. He doesn't mind that you can help them go to the school that they want to go to when they graduate or that you can help them buy their first home or you can, uh, like Debbie, you can buy unbelievable gifts for our grandchildren <laughs> constantly and consistently and um, <laughs> extravagantly. Anyway, so that's a whole nother topic, but it's okay. It's okay as long as you keep your priorities straight. But why wouldn't God give resources to givers? Why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he give resources? Think about it. Here's God with all the money in the world and all the money if there's money outside the world. You know, God owns Mars too. So all, all the money, all the resources. Over here, all of the people who need the gospel, all the missionaries that need to be sent, all the orphanages that need to be built, all the people that need to be fed, all the people that need clean water, all the people that need to hear about Jesus Christ, all the need, all the resources. Another way to say is all the supply, all the demand, if you're in business, okay? Have you ever thought about what's in the middle? You are. You're in the middle. And God will give you some resources and see what you do with them. And he doesn't mind you keeping 90%. That's a lot for yourself. 90%. If you just funnel 10% to these people who really need the gospel. Think about that. And so when you're faithful, then he gives you more. Then he gives you more. So here are the two principles of multiplication from this very famous story, Luke chapter nine, beginning verse 12. When the day began to wear away, the 12, that's the disciples, came and said to him, that's Jesus, while he's preaching now, send the multitude away that they may go into the surrounding towns and country and lodge and get provisions. For we are in a deserted place here. In other words, there aren't any restaurants close or stores. But he said to them, you give them something. They said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish unless we go and buy food for all these people. For there were about 5,000 men. Now, I just want you to notice something. Maybe you've never noticed. Notice the word men. 5,000 men. What you might not know is in that day, the way they counted crowds was they only counted the men. The reason was because most were married, most were married at a young age, and so they were actually counting families. The average for each family was the average, depending on age now, was four to five children. So when we say the feeding of the 5,000, we're talking not about 5,000 people, 5,000 families. So when you take a, a wife, a spouse, and then you take, let's say, four children. Now you've got six. So five times six is 30,000 people. 
Most theologians believe this is the largest crowd Jesus, uh, with whom Jesus ever spoke. Think about that. All right, then you go back, continuing verse 14, and he said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of 50. Just wanted y'all notice it, Jesus, because I love math and Jesus loves math too. All right, and they did so and made them all sit down. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the multitude. So they all ate, they all ate and were filled. And 12, notice the word, the number 12, baskets of the leftover fragments were taken up by them. Now, a lot of theologians have said the reason there were 12 baskets left over is because this is actually, they were in a region called the region of 12. And there was 12 major cities around it. But I personally don't believe that. I think there were 12 baskets left over because Jesus wanted each disciple to have a doggy bag. That's, that's my personal <laughs> opinion, okay? All right, but Jesus is preaching and he's been preaching all day. Uh, look, look, look at verse 12 where we started. It says, when the day began to wear away. You know what that means in the Greek? In the Greek that means when the day began to wear away. I mean, what, what, what a description. <laughs> and so I think the disciples personally kind of formed a little committee, and I think they said, what are we going to do? I mean, I, mean, it, I mean, this is good, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm starving. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to starve to death. I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to die right here. Right now, I'm about to die if I don't get something to eat soon. And I think one of the disciples probably said something like, that's it. That's it. Let's tell Jesus that the people are hungry. <laughs> because he seems to care a lot about the people. He doesn't seem to care much about us, but he does care a lot about the people. And so then, one of the disciples goes up to Jesus while he's still teaching. That's the inference from the scriptures. So he's teaching, see Jesus, he's had a podium just like that. I don't know if y'all know if they had those back in the first century, but he had a podium like that. And so he's up there teaching, huge crowd, kind of like today, but even larger than this. And one of the disciples, let's just say you, you're one of the disciples, put yourself in the story. You walk up to Jesus and you say, Lord, excuse me, excuse me, Lord, excuse me. Um, excuse me. Um, Lord, this has been great. <laughs> I tell you, this series of messages that you're bringing all in one day. <laughs> um, and, um, uh, but Lord, we, we feel like that the people are getting hungry. Now, I could go all night. I was just telling John. I said, John, I could go all night. This is just so good. I tell you, I could go all night. But uh, the, the restaurants, they're about right to close, and we feel like that uh, you should um, just, just wrap it up. <laughs> and Jesus said, you, you, you want me to finish because you think, you feel like, y'all feel like your little group kind of feels like that the people are hungry, right? Yes, Lord, it's, it's all about the people. It's all about the people. <laughs> And then he said something, maybe you've never seen this. I just want you to think about it, this was you. Look, look at verse 13. But he said to them, well then you give them something to eat. <laughs> I mean, you're in your little group, you're so concerned about them, why don't you give them something to eat? Think about how you would feel. And you gotta go back and tell them. And they said, well, did you tell them the people were hungry? Yes, that's what I told them. I said the people are hungry. Well, is he gonna dismiss the service? Well, what did he say? He said for us to give them something to eat. <laughs> what? Hey, look, at, look at this, there's 30,000 people here. And then there's some little kid that snuck back into town to Long John Silver's. <laughs> he got the two-piece meal with extra rolls. <laughs> and he's walking by and, you know, one of the disciples grabs it, you know, probably, probably Peter, you know, probably Peter. Think about it. And he probably grabbed one of the rolls and just started eating it. And John probably said, stop it, stop it, Peter. That's all we have. That's all we have. And then another one probably said, hey, that's it. Go tell Jesus 
this is all we have. And he'll dismiss the service. Now, I just want you to think just for a moment, if you had never read this in the Bible, and if you had been there that day, and you had a two-piece meal <laughs> with five rolls, don't you think Jesus would have dismissed the service? Just think, just come on, really, think. Well, don't you think? Okay, so you walk up to Jesus again. Lord, excuse me, excuse me. Just one, just, just one other thing, excuse me. Um, you know, a moment ago, I was telling you how good this uh, series is that you're doing, um, but, um, uh, and you told us, you know, to, um, you know, uh, get the uh, people something to eat, and, um, but Lord, all we have uh, is uh, two, two pieces of fish and um, uh, almost five rolls. Uh, Peter ate some, and, um, <laughs> but, um, um, and Peter, there was a kid, and Peter took it from him, Lord. I didn't take it from him. Peter did. Um, but um, anyway, that's all we have. So we're thinking that we should, you know, like we said a moment ago, we, we're, we took a vote, and we think we should you know, wrap it up. <laughs> and the Lord said, so you have uh, uh, two fish and almost, almost five rolls. I, I know how Peter is. And, um, and you say, yeah, that's all we have. And so the Lord says, yeah, that'd be great. Have them sit down in groups of 50. Um, Lord, um, we, we don't have a lot of these snack packs. Uh, we, just, <laughs> we just have one. And um, yeah, yeah, no, 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 that'll be fine. Now, my personal opinion is, you gotta remember, these guys knew the scriptures. Maybe better than us. When I say the scriptures, that's the Old Testament. The reason is the whole thing is the scriptures now, but then there was no New Testament. They were the New Testament, okay? So they knew the Old Testament, okay? And that's why I love to preach old and new too, because I love the whole thing. It's all scripture. It's all scripture, old and new, okay? But it's all the Bible. But they knew the scriptures. And there's a story where Elijah fed 100 men with 12 loaves of bread. Some of, many of the miracles Jesus did, do you know, are actually in the Old Testament in another way, and he just did them more and greater. So, so it's incredible. If you just go look at the miracles of Jesus sometime and see the analogy of it in the Old Testament, even though it actually happened in the Old Testament. Okay, so here, here is what I'm wondering. I'm wondering if one of them remembered that and said, you know what, I'll bet that when he prays over it, it's gonna multiply right in front of our eyes. And that's what many believers think happened. But do you know that's not what happened? Look, look at verse 16. He blessed and broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the multitude. So think about it. He blessed and broke them. Okay, so Peter might have, you know, grabbed one of the rolls and took it up. Jesus said, here, here, pray over mine first. Pray over mine first. Watch. Watch what happens when he prays over it. Watch. And then Jesus takes this piece of bread, probably, you know, the big round thing, but you know, and, and said, Lord, bless it, breaks it, and hands half of it back to Peter. Uh, are you through praying? <laughs> now, he, the Bible doesn't say this, but I just want to take a little license here. What if Jesus had said something like this? I just want you to think about it. Yes, Peter, I've blessed it. Now, you go give it away and see what happens. Can you just think about that for a minute? I've blessed it. It's been blessed by me. You know, Hebrews, now this New Testament, okay? If you're hung up on that, Hebrews says that when we tithe, Jesus receives our tithes and blesses them. I've blessed it, now you go give it away. And so Peter probably went up to the first person and said something like this. Take just a little piece. I mean, what would you have said? 
take a little piece, take a little piece, take a little piece, take a little, you pig, I said a little piece, what is wrong with you? And he gets down to the last person, and he's got just a little piece of bread left, sweat's pouring down his face, and right before she reaches to take it, it grows in Peter's hands. See, what you need to get about this story is the miracle did not happen in the master's hands. It happened in the disciples' hands. And it happened when the disciples did what the master told them to do, even though it didn't make sense. All right, so there are two principles of multiplication. They're real simple. Here's number one. It must be blessed before it can multiply. I mean, what if the disciples had just started giving it out without the blessing of Jesus? Never would have multiplied. Do you know I know people who say, well, I do give. I give when God leads me. And I give a little here and I give a little there. But they don't give the first 10% to the house of God, which is what Jesus. And Jesus said when we tithe, again, Hebrews says that Jesus himself receives our tithes. What? I, I know so many people who just have never caught that principle. Here's the second principle, it's real simple. It must be given away before it can multiply. So what if after Jesus had blessed the five loaves and the two fish, what if the disciples had eaten it themselves? Do you know how many people tithe? They catch that, but they ne never give over and above. So listen, here's what's amazing. Your finances are actually blessed. They have the potential to multiply but you never give it to anyone else. You never give it away, but it's blessed. So let me tell you now our testimony for Debbie and me. We, we got married at 18 and 19, young, okay? Uh, nine months later, I get saved. I already told you that first message I ever heard was on tithing, we tithed immediately, I got a raise the next day. God was just trying to encourage me, hey, you're on the right path. And then the Lord began to speak to us to get our finances in order. He literally said to me in my quiet time one day, I want you to get your finances in order so I can bless them. Now please hear me, this is very important. This is why we have financial classes and things like that, stewardship ministry, things like that, is to help you. Because many people have never been taught how to even do a budget, how to get their finances in order, things like that. And so the Lord said, I want you to get your finances in order so I can bless them. You need to know God cannot bless something that's out of order. So he told me to do three things. This, not be, this may not be the same three things for you, okay? So he, first thing he said to me was, get out of debt. Now, that means different things to different people. So, okay, for me, we could keep a mortgage because it was better for, for us, we, I believe, and again, it's whatever God tells you, but to be, when we made a payment, we are actually gaining equity in a home than like try to pay 20 years in an apartment and then buy a home and save up for it. So for us, we, we were able to, we, we had to, he said, get up, pay off all debt for depreciating items, but you can, you can keep a mortgage, okay? So that again, when I say these principles, it's whatever God tells you. God takes the specifics for you, okay? So we, it took about th two to three years, somewhere around there, and we just paid off everything. I mean, literally, literally. As a matter of fact, during that time, because uh, I, I told Debbie, we're not buying anything that's not an essential. Nothing. And her hair dryer broke on one Sunday morning while we're getting ready for church. And literally, it was, she said, it was right when I finished, she said, but I just need you to know, this isn't essential. Okay, <laughs> this isn't essential. And so I said, okay, I said, but I said, I feel like we just need to pray and just say, God lead us in what to do. She said, okay, but it is an essential. Before you pray, it's an essential, okay. So I said, okay, well, let's just pray. So we pray. We go to church at Shady Grove. We're just members. We're standing there worshiping. This lady walks up to Debbie during worship with a Walmart sack 
And she said, I was at Walmart yesterday, and I don't know why, but God told me to buy you this. It was a hair dryer. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you do it God's way, it's incredible what God does. Second thing God said to me was don't manipulate. So I'm in the ministry, and I used to have this, and I had a mailing list. And I'd send, uh, you know, uh, letters every month, these people on our mailing list, and they'd send checks. And so the Lord said, I want you to stop the mailing list. Now, I'm not saying you can't have a mailing list, but you need to know is my, is my purpose behind the mailing list, if you're in the ministry, to get money or to inform people of what's going on in the ministry? You just need to know what your motive is because God knows what your motive is. And so I told the Lord, I said, Lord, um, uh, I send the mailing list and people send in donations. And uh, the Lord said to me, well, if I want them to send donations, I'll speak to them. And so I quit, and they quit. <laughs> and I said, Lord, um, they're not sending the donations anymore. He said, mm-hmm. He said, I'll take care of you. And God began to miraculously take care of us. And then the third thing God said was give. He said, get out of debt, don't manipulate. And by the way, it's not just for people in the ministry because you can be manipulators too. But the third thing is he said, give. And I said to the Lord, <laughs> I said, well, Lord, I do give, I tithe. Now, I don't mean this wrong, okay? You gotta understand, God and I, we laugh. I say funny things, he says funny things. So I said, Lord, I do give, I tithe. And I felt like the Lord went, <laughs> <laughs> and I, actually, it was more like this, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> and I was like, I, Lord, I give 10%. And that's what the Lord said to me. He said, you don't give 10%, son. You return 10% because it's mine. And you read it all through scripture. I read it for you. He said, the tithe is mine. It belongs to me. It's been set apart for the house of God. So he said, when you give, you give over to Mother Tithe. So I said to the Lord, well, Lord, how will I know where to give, when to give, and how much to give? Now, those are three good questions, right? Where to give, when to give, how, how, how much to give. And he, here's what he said. And listen how simple this is. He said, I'll tell you. My sheep hear my voice. I'll tell you. God just began to bless us from everywhere. And then one day, I'm having my quiet time. And the Lord said to me, would you give me everything? This was after we had sold that $750 car. We bought another car. We had two cars. We had paid off all of our debt, all of those things. And we had money in the bank. And the Lord said, would you give me everything? And I knew what he meant. He meant personal checking, personal savings, ministry checking, ministry savings, retirement, both cars, and the house. And I remember thinking, Lord, I would love to give you everything. You gave me everything. You gave up everything for me. And so we sat down, Debbie and I, and decided where to give all the funds, where to give the cars, the people that, for the two cars, and then the house. We gave the house to a pastor, had five kids. And here's what God said to me. I only say to extravagant givers, ask anything you want. He said, I would never say that to a selfish person or a person who's not a giver because I can't trust them. He said, but I can trust you because you just gave everything. Just like that. And then he said to me, ask Ask anything you want. And you have to remember that I was very immoral before I accepted Christ. And then I've shared this in a book. I've shared it openly. Debbie shared it in a book. I was immoral after we got married. And Debbie didn't know. And I thought when she finds out, I'm gonna lose my marriage. 
So I knew what I wanted. I said, Lord, I want for Debbie and I to be passionately in love all the days of our lives. And this year we celebrated 43 years of marriage. We serve a God of multiplication. It might just be five loaves and two fish, but it's what God is asking you to do. So I just want to encourage you to just obey the Holy Spirit and give as the Lord leads you to give. And what's amazing is the fruit that comes out of it. And for me, it's been a blessed marriage and a blessed life. And that's what this series is all about, a blessed life. The joy and the blessing of giving, and then the rewards of obeying the Holy Spirit. There's no way to ever tell you how much I love you and how much I love your hunger for the Word of God. I'll see you next time.